Blog Talk Radio. Well, hi, everybody. Um, I just woke up early this morning, and let me just share this with you. Why? Because I'm just so ridiculously frustrated. Um, right before this interview, I actually, my kiddos had a sleepover date this weekend with a friend of theirs who seems to be living here lately. In any case, I was driving him home, and sure enough, wouldn't you know, shocker, I live in the state of Wisconsin, and there's like 85,000 inches of snow. Oh, my God, this is so ridiculous, right? Um, we have plans to go to the Dells, which is like one hour and 50 minutes away, and guess who's not getting to go to the Dells with her kids today? Yeah, that's me. No, I'm not happy about that, but what are we going to do? A um, couple quick announcements, of course, before we get Ivan on the phone. Oh, my God, I feel like Ivan's a mystery. Let me just tell you the work involved with this one. Oy vey, it's been a difficult journey, but thank you, God, that he's actually finally here. Super excited to talk to him. A um, couple quick reminders really fast. First of all, I want to remind everybody, please, please, please go ahead and check out Love's Two-Way Mirror on Facebook. As you know, in case you don't know, that's my film, and yes, it's shooting soon. Why should you look at it? I just put a website up. That's why. It's exciting. We're still collecting money, or should I say begging, and um, I'm super excited. I spent most of yesterday doing it when my kids were ignoring me. Yes, they were, so I, I, I welcome your input, obviously. That goes without saying. So take a peek at the website. If you guys get an opportunity, obviously I mentioned yesterday, I'll say it again, regular submissions are now in for my film festival. So if you want to submit, we have the web series, we have the youth category, we have the screenplays, and of course we have regular films. And of course our starting criteria is at least five minutes all the way up to 120 minutes. Just a quickie there, the fee has gone from 25 to 30, and I believe the registration for regular submission ends on April 14th. So, if you get a moment, Art is Alive Film Festival, which is on Facebook, or Art is Alive Film Festival dot com. So there's that. Um, my last thing I want to approach, and then we'll get going with our interview. Um, to those of you who follow the show, one of my dearest friends in New York City, uh, Kelly Caravitas, who happens to be um, an actor, a friend of mine, who has become really a very big part of my heart, who's in New York City, uh, very recently uh, lost his mother. Um, it's been a journey for the last four weeks for him, and Sadly, uh, he had just mentioned to me over a conversation about her going to hospice, and he just announced that she passed. Um, so uh, if you have a moment or a bunch of moments to send him, um, my heart is broken for him. He's, he's a very gentile, very wonderful person, and so he needs prayers and he needs thoughts and he needs he needs something. So don't be surprised if my schedule completely changes and I go flying off to New York to be supportive for him because that's what you do when you love someone. So I'd greatly appreciate it if you would... Uh, Send out some sentiments and love for him. So without further ado, um, you don't need to be listening to me. Let's listen to Ivan. He's pretty incredible from what I'm told. Hello, Ivan. Hey, good morning. How are you? Oh, you're here. Oh, my God. You're like, you're not a figment of my imagination. I've seen all these nice pictures of you and all these great details, and I'm like, does he exist? Is he alive? But you're here. You're finally here. I'm so excited. Thanks. I am too. It's good to be here. I am. Yes, it is. And I and I appreciate you doing the just I, I can't thank you enough. It's just been oh, I tell you, I don't know how many of these uh, internet radio shows that you do and it's really frustrating this format. I've done like 300 some shows. And it, there's only been a number of occasions where we've had issues, but it's like first I can get into the studio, then all of a sudden it was a time thing and now they've changed my call in number and I'm like what's it going to be next week? You're going to give away half of my show? I'm a little frustrated, but I, I can't thank you enough. I can, I can, I cannot thank you enough because it's pretty rare that I do a Sunday show. So you must be pretty special because people don't get on on the weekend. Well, I try to hang out and do nothing, well, but here we are. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Well, we're going to talk about a bunch of different things, obviously, because most people that are tuning in, um, obviously they don't know who you are, where you've come from, et cetera. Um, so I want to start back in the beginning, of course. So we'll talk about little Ivan, as I would call it, which is you are not the person that you were uh, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, or even more for that matter. So tell us a little bit about your, I like to think upbringing sometimes has something to do with where we land in our life. So tell us a bit about your life as a child, and were you very musically inclined right from the get-go? Uh, well, life as a child was kind of Kind of the norm. It was, I can't say I didn't have a difficult childhood. Um, okay. I was in a two-parent home, and and uh, and it was good. That's where I was introduced to music initially. And my uh, my mom had a lot of uh, records that were like you know Sinatra and uh, Dean Martin and and the uh, Tony Bennett. A lot of the you know the that era of music, 
but it introduced me to a lot of those songs and and it's really where I uh, developed a love for music and a love for initially for singing and so I started singing you know around eight years old or so and began to to just uh, really have a, a strong passion and love for that and I guess that was the beginnings of my musical journey. Ah, so, okay, I got. Yeah, I, I noticed one of those things about you in the notations when I was uh, researching you that obviously, of course, Sinatra is one of your particular favorites, and obviously you listened from earlier on, and and he is without a doubt absolutely one of the top five in my entire history of life where I'd listen to all day long, and I listened to some of your music, and so I was curious about if you ever curtail some of your vocal sounds to replicate him to some degree, because I know we all try to kind of when you find someone that you idolize or admire, you try to use some of their style or suggestion. Um, has that ever happened for you, musically? Uh, yes, yes. And I actually, you know, when I began singing, I began singing those songs. Um, I really I really fell in love with, like, those, you know, the Alfie and Strangers in the Night and Impossible Dream and, and uh-huh. uh, just, you know, a variety of that of that era of music was what initially sure. inspired me. I do put a lot of, uh, which those are, you know, they're like the tones singing-wise are, are kind of jazzy tones. and okay. But there's a lot of clarity in, in the singer's diction that is great for a singer to learn. It's just, it's, you know, it's really just really good music, really great singing. And you, we can really, uh, we can really learn to appreciate things in in all styles because they sure. they all have something that they're sharing. Oh, I agree with you without a doubt. And of course, you know, musically speaking, in the era that we live in now, obviously, I, I'm a huge crooner fan. So of course, you know, I like the Dean Martins and the Frank Sinatras, et cetera, Harry Tonic, for that matter. And so when you start out nowadays, as I understand it, and again, I'm tech stupid, so forgive me for this question. So you're a musician. You go into a studio to record a song, obviously. And and as I understand it, there's 50 ways under the sun where you can tech savvy it up to where it sounds so polished and unique. So for you, is it really more about making a mastered sound, or is it really more about you taking those vocals and putting meaning to it, meaning some people work hard on, you know, the tech side of things and making it polished and wonderful, on the other side of the fence, are you more concerned about just getting that message out there vocally versus am I making sense yeah. in the mix of it? You are making you are making sense. You're making complete sense. I'm more apt to getting the message out and just in okay. even deliverance of a raw vocal. Uh sometimes it works for me. Uh however, you know, understanding recording uh, there's another part that you do want it to sound a certain way, and you do want it to be polished, and you do want it to, you do want to add uh, other, you know, maybe vocals to uh, to enhance the overall message, the overall sound to the ear, uh, so that it becomes more receptive. There is a there's an art in in that too, where you place things and 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 the nuance of how you do it. Uh, there, there's truly an, an art to that. There's truly an art to to just uh, writing or or just being alive in the moment. There's, it's really a lot of individual uh, things to concentrate on. Oh, I imagine. I can't even, I mean, oh, my God, it's just way over me. First of all, I can't sing to save my life. Perhaps in the shower they tell me because I think they've heard me or in the car. <laughs> So I, I give so much admiration and adoration to people that can do something like this because music has a power that's unknown. You know, I'm more in the film side of things or radio. And sure, there's something to be said about that. that you know, music is just so moving in so many different ways, and we'll get into that, obviously. So here you are, and Ivan's taking this journey, of course, and he's already been influenced by some of the greats musically as far as that goes. Um, obviously, uh, you're a very intelligent individual, from what I gather, everything I've read, everything I've heard and been told. And so... Starting out early on, did you already know that you were going to take the path to music, or did you have just a regular full blown nine to five kind of job, and then became a creative? How did all that happen? Yeah, I just you know I I think inside I always had the passion you know towards music, mm-hmm. 
uh, and I had the passion for music. And of course, early, you know, I got involved in it. I, I uh, started writing and, and started uh, singing and later started teaching myself to play piano. And okay. I also I got involved with a lot of different groups, bands, and, you know, just would play anywhere we could play. So uh, that was my early uh, exposure into the music. But, of course, you know, you have to survive. So, you know, of course. you have to work here, there. And, and in the meantime, you're still uh, focused and, and pursuing that music. Yeah, sometimes I think that, you know, um, for a musician, if I think for true musicians, you don't ever stop. I don't care what really life throws at you. Sure. Inside you that that you identify. I mean, that's part of your identity. And so it's like no matter what, you you have to produce that. That, that has to come forth. And, right. and so it, it it is a uh, it's a force that really helps you to overcome things that would uh, become obstacles in your path. Gotcha. No, I understand completely. I do. And some have said, obviously, and I assume that this is true in your category as well, meaning that the more personal experiences you have that might be toxic or more detrimental to you, those tend to oftentimes be the moments in which you become most creative. In fact, there's, I'm of the firm mindset that the more tragedy and trauma you live through, it literally it makes the, for sadly the most beautiful creations. Um, would that be a true statement as it relates to music as well? Yes, I, I definitely would agree with that. And, and you know, it's, it, it's unfortunate in one hand because you think, well, you know, the only way you're going to come up with this great stuff is if you get out there and you suffer a lot. Now, you know, no, right. you can't come up. You can come up with, with great stuff without suffering. You might just, you know, you, you just it's, it's about expression. It's really about personal expression. But as sure. you suffer through things in life, they do deepen your perspectives. And Agreed. as those perspectives deepen, then, of course, so does your create creativity and your craft. Gotcha. I imagine so. And because as I understand it, you had initially started off being on more on the rhythm and blues side of things and then kind of transitioned over time. Now, do tell, because obviously there are some blues music that I've listened to that I could sit and listen to for hours, obviously. So what would make you ever want to delve away from doing that sort of music? I'm just curious because it, it, to me, I think it's beautiful. Well, yeah, and I agree, and, and periodically now, you know, I'm still inspired by it, and I still will create, uh, you know, in that vein of music, too. But uh, generally, <laughs> it was, it was, it was reaching rock bottom. It was going to that place of rock bottom in my life, where, you know, I'm I heard the voice of God and, and, and he spoke to me and told me that, you know, the right. gift that I had belonged to him and that he wanted me to use it in this whole other way, which was for him. And so <laughs> that changed everything. You know, it changed my direction, ah. that changed my perspective, that changed my music. Uh, and it didn't happen overnight because, you know, I was doing music my way for years. I had always done music my way. So now all of a sudden to go in this other direction that I didn't clearly understand um, was was a, just a brand new thing and, and a growing and learning experience from day one. Gotcha. Okay. Well, this is an interesting question. It's just a sideline question, but of course I couldn't help myself because when I was in research, researching you, I found this out, and I'm like, how cool is this? You used to work for the U.S. Census Bureau, and I'm like, seriously? I just want to know what would provoke anyone <laughs> to work for the Census Bureau because I'm like, unless you're like totally into the dollars and cents and numbers and stuff, what made you do that? Was that just a, hey, nine to five, got to do what you got to do sort of thing? Because I'm like, that's different. No, you know what? I I've had a history of, of working for the Census Bureau because I 
you know, ever since I, when I first did that, I just always enjoyed it. It's, you know, it only comes around uh, every so, every like 10 years or so. So, uh, mm. but it's an important, it's an important piece that people don't really uh, understand or recognize. It's, right. You know, a lot of people, they feel like, well, you know, this is, they're, you're trying to get in my business. That's the, really what ah. you're thinking. They're trying to get in my business, and right. I don't need to be telling them this, and I don't need to tell them that. But really, they're, right. you know, yes, they're trying to get in your business because they're trying to help your business. If you if you allow yourself to be known and say, hey, here I am, then they get a better understanding of how many people uh, need sure. assistance and need services in those areas. And that's how they allocate funding. So, you oh. know, those of us who stay hidden, when, when you know, you add up those numbers and so they only allocate a certain amount of funding and then now all these people who wanted to stay hidden are coming out looking for services and looking for these, these other things that are offered and they're not really there because there were sure. no funds allocated for them. So so I really believe in that and uh, and I enjoyed it. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely, uh, it was the best thing. It was just the most enjoyable thing that, that uh, I've done. I actually love it. I really oh, do. that's cool. No, that is cool. And that gives me a different perspective, too, because I do think oftentimes a lot of us look at a job and we're like, why would somebody want to do it? Like, I'm like, why would you want to be a dentist? Apparently some people like that. I'm like, I don't know why, but whatever. So that's kind of cool. That, that's neat. Thank you. That gives me a little different perspective here. Um, so let's continue on with your journey and talk a little bit, because obviously, of course, we all know that most of us that have had a spiritual awakening of sorts or been touched by a higher being, or in this particular case, obviously, I'm a, I'm a Catholic, so of course I believe in God, and I think most of us do. There comes a point in your life where obviously things aren't always so pleasant. Um, so we should address that part of your life, because obviously you kind of fell down there for a little while, and you kind of had some issues in terms of substance abuse and things like that. So let's start off by asking you, Frankly, in your own mind, if you could tell us, what do you believe was maybe one or two of the predominating factors that led for you to start getting so heavily involved in abusing yourself from that perspective? Well, I think uh, I think partially because it was a a uh, a large part of what was going on at the time it was, it was just out there, and especially what I was <laughs> dealing with. You know, I was doing a lot of music. I was hanging out with a lot of different musicians. We were playing clubs and and bars mm-hmm. and all these types of venues, and and you're exposed to it. I was exposed to it, and it was really sure. everywhere. And uh, that's there's no you know there's no excuse for that. I think ultimately, really, there's something mm, there's something lacking within. There's something that that is inwardly off. And so, you know, you look for these outward solutions that actually can, you know, make the thing even worse, make your problems worse. And I think that's really what happened. I think there were some uh, inward things uh, in my in myself, within myself that uh, just had never been addressed. Maybe I didn't know how to address those things. And so, of course, it made me looking for these outward things more uh, more pleasing. And you don't realize you're trying to fill a void, but that's really what you're trying to do. And before you know it, you can <laughs> you can be in a big void <laughs> like I was, like I found myself really uh, completely, you know, strong and addicted to uh, with substance abuse and, and alcohol and just all of that and just uh, incredible downward spiral to uh, to homelessness and living on the on the street, which you know if I would have never thought, but the reality of it was a was an eye opener and. Uh, yeah. It also, though, you know, as I look at it now, it, it allowed me to see firsthand uh, what that really feels like, you know, to know what that what that really is about. Because today, uh, you know, our homeless situation is is out of control, and you know, there are a lot of people who see the homeless out there, you know, in all these situations and all the hardship and in the in the uh, 
different phases of weather as well. I mean, there's so much that you deal with out there. And a lot of people just want to close their eyes and, oh, hey, I don't want to see that and, you know, get that out of there and let's get these people moved out of here. And and I just kind of want to push off on them. But uh, these are people, and uh, and they are experiencing some some tremendous odds. And we don't always really recognize that. But, you know, until you, you get down there and, and uh, do it, experience it yourself, uh, someone you really love uh, goes through that. You, you don't really um, – you don't really understand – and, and take hold of the uh, the the real weight of that that burden, and it's a great one. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time I slept on a concrete sidewalk. <laughs> that did just wow, just the feeling of that, and and the the pain that it will cause you. You know, without having some type of padding down there, I realized quickly why. People use cardboard and all those other things that they use to pad that. But, um, you know, your whole body will ache like you wouldn't believe. So, you know, there's there's uh, there's that side of, side of it, you know, and I had to – I had to go through that. I had to experience that. And I remember, you know, asking, hey, you know, how did I get here? And – it was it was my choices that had led me there, you know. Everything in life is a choice. So I mean, everything, everything. Do I get up at seven? Do I get up at eight? Do I get up at twelve? Do I not get up? You know, you know. Do I brush my teeth? Do I not brush my teeth? Do I fix my hair? Do I not? Every single thing in life is a choice, and those choices uh, make a difference in our days, which make a difference in our present and our future. You know, so so these things do shape us, and we are not usually um, really conscious of the choices that we make. We you know we just we make them so quickly and so haphazardly. We don't really give thought to the weight that those choices can can take, but uh, but they have great significance on the outcome of our lives, and that's really what I began to find out. Gotcha. Now, when you had first, clearly there's a lot of people that talk about this, and, and we all live in the United States, so we know it's a huge epidemic. So there's some basic questions that we usually ask people that have sadly had to go through your circumstances. Like, for instance, looking back on some of this, because nowadays, I mean, the drug epidemic is just running rampant. I mean, you can get it in all different forms. Things are getting much worse, much more severe. Um in terms of that. So talk to us a little bit about, I, I think people have this misnomer out there that, well, you know, we would never get involved in this and how would you get a hold of this stuff? But as I understand it, it's not that difficult to slip into those shoes, is it? Meaning that if there's, you know, the product accessibility is high. Um, obviously, of course, the regulations aren't as they should be drug-wise. So was it, you know, was it a hard transition to go from being regular Ivan, let's say, to all of a sudden Ivan's using on a regular basis? I mean, I'm assuming access is, is almost, I mean, simplistic, if you will. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And, you know, and you're you're right. I mean, I remember when I was starting, getting started, and, and I, I remember, uh, I remember the time when I was, uh, I was using powder cocaine, and I remember the day when it just kind of dawned on me that, I had to have this, you know, just, it just kind of hit me that, you know, I could just say, oh, man, no, you know, I don't need this. Or I don't need this. And, and just focus in whatever it is I needed to focus in as I had been doing. But I realized that there was a switch. Something in me said I had to have this. And when I recognized that, I realized that this thing had quite quite a little hold here, and I needed to to deal with it. But I quickly realized that it wasn't as easy as I thought. And and then that pull becomes a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit harder and harder. And it's just, you know, before you realize it, you're full-blown, and it's just become a part of your day. And 
as you continue the spiral, it becomes the the whole of your day. It becomes the focal point of your day. You you focus your day around that. And that's where that's what it became. And uh, <laughs> it's a nightmare. You know, it's a nightmare existence. It really is. I gotcha. And of course, obviously, we want to address the the clear side of things, which is. Most human beings, obviously, you know, they don't mean to get into a state where they become an addictive person. Um, and clearly then I almost feel like they get in too deeply, it sounds like, often occasions where they just don't know how to get out. So my question to you is for your particular circumstance. Now, how, what sort of effect did this have around uh, the people that loved you? I mean, experiencing this, did they know how, how challenging was it for you in terms of your actions having that kind of an effect on someone else? Yeah, that's a hard one. It's uh it's hard on it's hard on you because um there's a there's a part of an addict. There's a part of an alcoholic. There's a there's a part of that individual that you know that you've always known and that you've loved and your loved ones hold to that part and they try to bring you to that to be that person, uh, and there's there that person is there, but it's it's almost like that person has been weakened, you know. But as you're going through that, uh, you know, you you hurt you hurt these people that you love because you tend to use them or take advantage of them because you know they love you, and so but you have fallen in love with whatever. You know this thing is that 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 binds you, so so you use and you take advantage of those people those people's love for you, and you you inside you recognize kind of what you're doing because you do care for them, but this other thing is 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 more powerful than that, and it's dictating to you at this point. And all you feel is you have to, you know, you have to do whatever whatever that's telling you to do. And I found that to be very true because, you know, I hurt the people that I love very much. And the people that love me the most were the ones who tended to hurt the most. And and I believe it's because you use, you use their love for you against them, you know, and it's, and it's awful, but that's 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 where you find yourself. Um, yeah. I can imagine. I can only imagine. And of course, the the bigger question being is, is I know that other other people have talked about. At what point did you get to a point where you're able to forgive yourself? Because as I understand it, that's an important part of the process. Yeah, uh, mm, that's a great question. Uh, mm-hmm. Because you know what, it's it's, it's it's hard to answer. You you know you have to you have to come to a place of peace with the things that you have done and the experiences that you've had, and you have to realize that uh, those things don't define you as a person. You know, as a person, you are still this other individual that that can change. I don't care how how dark, how deep, uh I don't care. You can change. There is there is that ability to change uh, for us as, you know, human beings. And it, when we have that change, a sincere change within, then the outward follows. And you you'll begin to see the evidence of a changed life. Now, in the midst of that, you're still going to be uh, reminded of this and that and all this other stuff, you know, and your own thoughts will betray you because they're going to jump up and you're going to hear, hear uh, you know, a voice telling you, hey, um, you know, don't forget about this, don't forget you did that, and don't forget, you know, so it's, it's a constant, but you do have to get to a place where you're able to, to forgive yourself and let it go and realize, okay, look, I've done what I've done and I've been what I've been, but but I am who I am and I will be 
who I will be. And okay. that's that outweighs, who, you know, who I was. And gotcha. so you Perfect. grab hold to that. Great answer, actually. And and that makes a lot of sense, clearly. And, of course, I, I guess we want to ask the obvious question, which is to those of us who have not had an addictive personality or have had to live through addiction, I guess the bigger question becomes, what was the process like when you finally came to terms with, well, twofold question, when, what moment, what was that moment like when you finally decided for yourself, I'm on the path, I'm done, I need to find help and I need to get over this. So if you could describe that, and then more importantly, what is that process like? I mean, is it, I mean, imagine it's agony and arduous, but I mean, typically it doesn't go away overnight, does it? And it's a daily battle, I'm guessing. Yeah, I think for for me it was you know I remember I remember um going uh, to one of the locations where I would obtain you know substances and I remember on the way I had a thought to myself um, that I really I, you know I was think just thinking and I was thinking you know why am I doing this I don't really enjoy it I don't really want to do it. I need to, you know, break loose of it and and focus, refocus on life. And and I started thinking a little more deeply on it. And I thought to myself, I don't, I don't enjoy this. I think I'm really doing it out of habit, you know, because mm-hmm. I had be, I had become uh, in the habit of doing it on a day to day basis. And so when I had that thought and realized that that it was more out of habit than it was out of anything else, um, sure. right after that is when really I was required to to change and and okay. to turn things turn things around. Really, I I I I, I was impressed by God to to stop. And he gave me. It was it was in the month of December, and he said, "Hey, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna take this into the new year, because if you do, I, I'm gonna take your blessings and I'm gonna give them to someone else." And that, for me, you know, even though I was doing what I was doing, you know, I have to say that it was during those times that I really came in touch with God, and He really got in touch with me. And he let me know that what I was dealing with was was spiritual, and the way for me to break it was spiritually, and and that that he did have this other purpose for me. He did have this other, you know, these other intentions. But I was going to have to get it get it together, and I was going to have to get in line. Sure. And when I had that thought that hey, I think I'm just really just doing this out of habit, it was almost like he was waiting for me to have that thought. And that's when he communicated to me and said, okay, now you're going to stop this. And he gave me basically a two-week window. And uh, wow. and I did. And I, I stopped, just just stopped. And wow. uh, immediately he began to uh, reform my life. I started, uh, just things started to open up and things started to change. Now, I'm not saying that, that you know, there was this, instantaneous miraculous moment and everything became sunny i'm telling you it's been a journey and it's been some tough times and some struggles and some challenges because you don't go from one depth of life to the other and and not experience some turmoil so i don't want anyone to get the impression that that it's that it's easy it's not necessarily easy, but it's doable, and and it's necessary. It's necessary for you to to be who you're meant to be in life, and to do what you're meant to do in life, and just to have some productivity, as opposed to just you know, um, you know, wasting all those the gifts and talents, the intelligence and, and, and just all the things that we are endowed with just wasting them. You know. Um I see just the difference in in just really acknowledging and, and being grateful for whatever you have been given because we've all been given something. Agreed without a doubt of course. 
And the other question I want to ask about this is if somebody happens to be listening in today, clearly, and, and I guess we always ask ourselves this question because you see it in society often, you know, as we mentioned, the, the addiction, huge problem, homelessness, huge problem. So uh, double-fold question here. First of all, what can we uh, as citizens do or, or individuals, I should say, is there a way for us to sense or be able to see that problem or that issue coming? I Meaning, is there any way that we can prevent this? Anything that we can do to try to remedy or, or make this not run rampant so much anymore um, as far as that goes? Uh, you know, because obviously we oftentimes feel paralyzed in that we see a problem all the time, but fixing it or helping fix it is another story. You know what I'm saying? So since you've been on that side of the fence, can we do something to make this go away little by little or make a big impact somehow? Uh, yeah, you know, for, for young people, we, we need to, uh, we need to be more open towards them. We need to be more, uh, observant of them and we need to, to understand the importance of communicating with them. Um, that's, that's all of those things are huge because we can really shape their views and and because it's re- it's really about you know understanding that you don't you don't need to use you don't need to use drugs you don't need to try any of that stuff you you don't need to be anything other than yourself you know to really maximize being the best you that you can be you don't need you don't need any of those enhancers the same thing when like you look at the sports world and, and this person and that person. Oh, wow, this person won this. And, oh, they were the champion of that. Oh, boy, we found that they were using steroids. Or, oh, we found. And the same thing. It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's enhancers. And, and though, or at least what you feel will enhance you. And, and that's what it's all about is, it's, you know, you, all, you, everything you need to enhance yourself, you have within yourself. And that's what you have to realize. You don't need to look for these outward things. You need to look for the inward things. And exactly. if you do that, then, you know, you'll recognize that those other things have have nothing for you. Uh, also, I think we have to be aware of the, uh, the growing problem that a lot of drug usage um, and addiction now is caused by, you know, prescription drugs. More than, more than street drugs that, that were once the big issue. Now it's really more uh, accessible because these are prescription drugs. So, you know, as a youngster, maybe your parents have them, or maybe a relative has them, or maybe a friend's parents have them, or, you know, there's just so many different ways you can get a hold of things. And, uh, you know, we have to really, you know, take a look at that as, as a society and, and be aware of, of that because that has really changed things as well. That's why the epidemic has really sure. grown and gotten out of hand because the, these are legal, you know, these are legally uh, gotten drugs. And exactly. they, the, 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 the ramifications, though, of, of what they create and cause, uh, you know, are taking things to another level. So uh, that's, that's, you know, I think those are the things that we we could do. Well, then that brings us, of course, to, and clearly, just so you know, and I'm sure that you've heard this quite a number of times, but those of us, obviously, it always bears repeating. Um, it's very heroic what you've done, and granted, you have a very large spiritual being in your corner, but just to have the courage to admit that you live this and actually find your way out of it and finally do some good in terms of taking a bad situation and making it so much more positive. I'm a huge advocate for survivors. You should be commended for that, uh, truly. Um, in case anyone hasn't reminded you lately, that's incredibly remarkable to come out on the other side and be able to talk about it and share your experience. It's pretty phenomenal. So thank you for that part. Um, we want to talk about the success, obviously, because here you are at this point in time, um, obviously a different person. So now on the other side of the fence, now what is life like, obviously, because now – you're you're uh, at a point where you're not using any longer. You're obviously not homeless. You're obviously doing some tremendously good things from a creative side. So, um, yeah, I, I would imagine that you look at yourself in the mirror 100% differently now. I'm guessing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do, and I, you know, I, I, I 
periodically, you know, I think back or sometimes I go through areas that I used to hang out in and it's, and it's night and day, you know, I, I haven't forgotten, you know, where, where I've been or, or any of that, but, but I am a completely different person, you know, I'm a completely different person, completely different place today. And, and I am, I'm feeling good. I feel good about that. I, I'm very, you know, vibrant about life and, and positive just about life and, and everything that that it holds for for us as people. And it's a, and it's a good it's a great statement to be able to say that because uh, some you know there's many people who who experience traumatic uh, or devastating events in their life and you know and a mm-hmm. lot of people yet yeah, it you know they it can take you out. But then there are those stories where you hear the power of a person that triumphs uh, over those things, and and they are, you know, they're reminders of of who we are as people, right? And what what really is possible for us if we dig deep and and say no, you know, to whatever it is that's trying to to bring us down or take us out. And and there is that power within should we choose to grab hold of it. You know, I'm a big professor of of God because it was God who really stepped in and, and showed me the his reality. You know, if I had had any doubts, uh, they were eliminated and erased because I saw the clarity of it. Now, you know, I don't I know everyone, you know, doesn't everybody's in a different place and everybody doesn't even want to acknowledge that there's, there's a God, sure. but I'm going to tell you there, there's a, there's a force greater than you that is there and is always there. And we must recognize it. We must uh, respect it because, because it is real and it is true. And we all will, will answer, you know, one day. So, you know, just to live life mm-hmm. haphazardly or, or, you know, you can really look at things from a common sense view and, and realize that that's not the way to do, you know, just the, if you just have common sense and use common sense, you'll, you'll see things and observe things and experience things in life that will clearly dictate to you. There's another power here at work and, and it's definitely greater than me. So, you know, I think that's, that's what we have to just be aware of. But for me, that's, that's what, uh, that's what really showed itself, and that's what has taken me from where I was to not even where I am, but where I'm going. And just to have the the ability to sing and play and write at the, the level that I'm able to do it is is amazing to me because uh, because I had lost all of that, so it was rebuilding it from from day one. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about life today, and I'm excited about all the the opportunities that are available in life today, and uh, and it feels good. Well, of course, definitely, oh. and I, and I think you know I had I think most people don't really realize it, you know, because I've been an author for let's say twenty twenty five years now, actually, and it's a wonderful feeling when you get to that point where you finally realize why you're here. You know, I think we all have that moment where the, where it finally yeah. kind of gets revealed to us. You're here for a purpose. Your gift is here for a reason. And that's pretty incredible and pretty moving, and it does alter the way you look at things and live your life, I think. Um, if someone was listening today, um, and we all know we live in very tumultuous times right now, I mean, the State of the Union in terms of, you know, who's running our country and the ugliness that's going on and the hatred that still exists, people lose faith. Um, they lose faith easily. So I guess as a man of... of what sounds like tremendous faith at this time in his life. What would you suggest to someone who's listening in terms of uh, not to give up hope or not to give up faith that there is a higher purpose and a higher being watching you? Yeah, I think that, you know, you made a good point about uh, purpose. And there was an author who wrote a book of, uh, about the purposeful life. And, and you know, it sold millions of copies. I mean, it's tremendous. And But it really shows us that as people, you know, we are all seeking, you know, hey, what's my purpose? Why am I here? That's really the question. And everybody, everybody has that question. 
and 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 that's why when you uh like you said as an author or myself as as an artist you lock into right. purpose you know and so and i have to i got i'll be the first to tell you that recognizing purpose for me uh was tremendous in the fact that mm-hmm. now i didn't i didn't have to be entertained by any of these other things and I didn't have to look at this or look at that because I had a clear focus now on what I needed to be focused on and and then there is a, there's a joy that comes from that and that's what people really seek so first of all we do need to recognize we have a purpose we all have a purpose now the next question is well what's mine how, how do I how do I find that <laughs> You you know what you have to you have to find that inwardly because it's in you whatever it is that generally tends to come natural for you will come easy for you um, something that that you're just that you just tend to be gifted in you know and we all have it it might you know it doesn't have to be uh, writing it doesn't have to be dancing it doesn't have to be singing it doesn't have to be musical inclination it could be uh maybe you're great at mechanics or figuring out mechanical things or maybe you're maybe you're great with administration or i mean there's so many different ways that gifts operate but we really have to get in tune with ourselves and take a good look at you know what really makes me happy what what do i really enjoy what would i do if if you know just to be doing it what what do i enjoy most doing all those things what am i most passionate about ask yourself those questions and you will tend to to lock right into your purpose but for me also exactly. i'm going to tell you you got to lock into the one the creator you know, the creator is the one who put the purpose within us. So because those gifts, those talents, the, that intelligence, the, all of those things that are in us were placed in us. And so that purpose is identified through that. So for me, it was getting in touch with the creator who let me know, hey, this is what this is what you're supposed to be doing, and this is what I got. So if he could tell me that, then then that's where it is. That's where the answer is, and he can tell anyone. Hey, this is this is what you you should be doing. Oh, you, you know you can be guided in those directions. So, I mean, it's, it's, but it's about linking in with yourself and taking that time to, to for some self identity to uh, recognize who you are, and and not being concerned about what the crowd is doing or what the crowd is saying. Who are you? Who are you? And are you are you able to stand on 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 that? Um, your individualism. Sure. Can you be yourself hmm. and be okay with being yourself, or are you going to cringe down because somebody else telling you you need to be this other way? You know, it's very important for for us to identify ourselves and to be strong enough, bold enough, courageous enough to take a stand and and let people know, hey, this is who I am. Now you you can like it or you can not. But this is who I am, and this is this is, you know, this is acceptable, you know, and and, and that's really something else that that uh, the Lord had impressed upon me. He says, "I accept you. If I accept you, that's all that matters." And uh, and that was another big factor for me because then I I no longer cared, you know, what other people had to say, whatever what they had to think. I knew He accepted me, and if I was right there. And I was all right. And any any fine tuning I need to do along the way, trust me, he's gonna make sure you get it done. So and and there's there's a peace in that. So it's it is. It's about purpose, it's about self identification, it's about self examination, uh, and it's really about getting in touch with God, the creator of us all, who 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 has the purpose for each one of us. Well but actually too. And now uh, we get to talk about the really cool stuff that you do, actually. Not that you're not a cool man to begin with, but first of all, obviously, I know you spend an awful lot of time uh, in different places, meaning, of course, some of your volunteer work. Like, obviously, you worked uh, volunteered with Skid Row in L.A., um, Open Door Ministries. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. When you're volunteering your time and you're working with people that have uh, been to prison or youth individuals who have not quite seen the world in the same way that we have, or in Skid Row, for instance, now, I imagine that that must be 
I mean, largely enriching for you, but also in terms of um, just it must be devastating just not only watching this but knowing you come from that place and seeing people without hope. And What made it important for you to um, spend some of your time doing this and working with these individuals, and what are some of the great things that are coming out of your experiences with them? Well, uh, for me, the, the greatest part of it is being able to give back and share from your own experience uh, you, because you recognize, you know, if you were out there like that, then there's another you out there. <laughs> so right. There's somebody, there's somebody sitting in that chair, and they may not say a word, but they are hanging on every word you're saying, you know. And Gosh. and when you leave, when you leave that day, uh, and you go and, and think to yourself, well, I sh- hope I had an impact. I hope somebody got something. There's somebody that was there that did get something, and that something just might be the thing that uh, allows them to to take a stand and stand up on their feet and to change. And so it's it's really about you know trying to um, well, know hey look uh, I know where you are I've been there myself uh, you can mm-hmm. you can do it you can make it you can change you can come out of this I know the opposition I know it looks big it looks bad it it looks impossible and it, it's overbearing I understand all of that but I'm telling you it's all a smokescreen are you are you willing to to believe are you just willing to believe that that it can be done i'm here standing here i'm letting you know you know you can you can mm-hmm. see me you can hear me you can know that that yes you can do it and so you know i'm living proof and if i can be living proof to you then there's no there's no reason you should doubt because i can tell you i can tell you coming out of the dark but but being brought into the marvelous light is a, is a reality and uh, and if it can be done for me, then it can be done for you, and and we can do it. We can do it. And sometimes what I realize is, in that state, that's all you really need to hear. That's what you want to hear. That's what you're desiring. You're looking around you, and everybody's beaten, and everybody's broken down, and everybody's in the dark and in the dirt like you are, and 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 others are just talking down at you and and talking bad about you and saying what you can't do, haven't done, and won't do. And and really, you just want to hear somebody say, you can do it. You can make it. Right. That's really what you want to mm-hmm. hear. But it's all the more important to hear it from somebody who's been there themselves and has done it, to say, I'm here to show you it can be done. And really, that's what, uh, you know, I, I believe that's the purpose of Christ. You know, Christ came to show us, hey, look, I'm going to show you how to do this thing. I'm going to show you how to address these these issues. I'm going to show you how to address people when they come at you like this. Or I'm going to show you how to get on a course and stay on it. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be an example to you. And uh, that's what we're meant to do for others. So, you know, whatever it, whatever it is that you have overcome, you know, in your life or that you overcome in your life, you're able to take that experience and, and share it with somebody else to to help them be an overcomer as well. Gotcha. Well, and of course, obviously, one of the ones we started talking about, which is through music, of course, clearly. Um, and so we want to talk about, I know, obviously, you've been your first CD. You've been number 19 on Reverb Nation, which is quite impressive as far as top Christian artists, which which is very impressive. It's very exciting, actually. Um, I know the CD is entitled New Praise. So talk a little bit about process. I, I love talking to musicians about uh, we all start out with a creative idea one day, whether it's a song or whether it's a movie or whatever. So talk to me a little bit about how um, some of the challenges or some of the, I should say, some of the coolest parts about putting together music, but obviously some of the challenges as well uh, involved with putting together new praise. And further, how long did it take uh, to put together? Uh, it actually came together over a span of a few years because um, it took time oh. to to really write all the music, and then I put together a, a band to uh, start playing it and rehearsing it, and and then took the band in and began to lay it out and record it. Part of it I had already recorded myself. 
uh, on my own, and but then there were other parts to it that I wanted to bring together that I wanted, you know, live musicians and live playing on. Um, so it was definitely uh, a process. And one thing about recording, I I, I really love recording, and and a part of it's be because I'm a writer, and as a writer, you want to. Um, it's like you want to see your work in a tangible form. It's the same thing as right. a an author. You know, as an author, you have this great story in your in your head, and and it's like, mm-hmm. oh wow, and, you know, it gets rolling in your head. You can you can have you can read the whole book in your mind, but until you get it down on paper, uh, or in a form a format where where another can read it, where it can be shared, where it's produced, then, uh, you know, it's, it's not there yet. And so as a, an artist, as a songwriter, I want to record to have those songs there for just my listening, but, but also for the listening of others. And sure. I, I understand now more than ever that uh, the importance of recording is, is all the more, uh, in essence, because uh, it's there when you're not. And, you know, when you're gone, it's still around. Uh, you're always still putting that out there. And there's something there's something good about that. And just same thing with a, with a book. I mean, there's so many great books out there. And mm-hmm. the authors are, are long gone, long gone. But their work, their thought, their research, their their everything is still there, and it's still being shared, still being enjoyed, it's still being celebrated, still being embraced, and that's that's what it's all about. Exactly. Now, in terms of the CD itself, uh, have you been privy to getting feedback? Any good thoughts? Any people sharing with you what they think of the music? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of great feedback, and I think ah. people are really enjoying the the music, and uh, and it feels good. It's, I I have a lot of other artists that uh, really always are, are embracing the music and telling me uh, how much uh, they enjoy it, and it's always good for. Uh, other artists to have an impact with other artists because you know it's. it's Creatively, it's it's you know they are they're able to recognize some things that maybe an average listener may not recognize because they're more in tune with the artistic piece themselves. So right. so to get you know to get some praise from them or to some accolade from them is it's always a uh, a good feeling. But uh, but yeah, I just you know I think you have to uh, be satisfied with with your work, and there's going to be people who may not get it or may not uh, even like it. <laughs> That's okay. Right. You know, I I think it's it's if you're satisfied with it, then you produced what you wanted to produce and it will um you know, it it will have an impact on others that are going to recognize what what you recognize. They're going to hear what what you hear. And uh, they're going to embrace that because there's a, um, as a writer, it's, it's, there's a gift in, in being the messenger and being able to say things uh, in a way that people think and feel, but they're not always able to express. Gotcha. Well, and on that caveat, of course, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, one of your pieces to play online, as a matter of fact. So now you get to rest for a second because I'd love to play some of your music here. I want my folks that are listening in to be able to get a sense of the man that you're listening to, get some idea in terms of how he sounds, uh, and obviously make you want to go out and get a copy of it, obviously, because not everyone is as lucky as I am where I got it forwarded to me. So I got to listen to a bunch of different things. So um, I'm going to be quiet and um, give you a couple of minutes and let's play some music from this wonderful gentleman by the name of Ivan Edmonds. Here we go.
Maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Leadeth me beside still waters. He restores my soul. My soul. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who has set
He restores my soul. My soul. My soul. Nice. What's it that? It's a nice sample, uh, actually. It's one of my favorites out of the one she, she sent to me, and I picked it out, and I thought, well, this is nice. So thank you for sharing that. So I guess my only other question, it, it, it's, it was just, it's so moving and so touching because sometimes you, you tend to forget that in the rigmarole, as I call it, in life, and we all are terribly busy with all sorts of commitments and things that we do, um, it all comes back to very simple basics, you know, our spirituality, our love for one another, our individuality, and our need to be connected with one another in a positive way. So sometimes you need that to, to bring back, to bring yourself back to base. And so you're you're very good at that with your music. So I appreciate you sharing that. So my only other question to you then is is for future, what what's the next year or so look like? What do you have in the hopper that's going on? Now, it's, obviously, you're promoting new praise, but what else is happening? Anything else we should be looking for? New horizons, things you've got out there? I'm I'm working on a uh, a project with some youth. I'm working with a youth choir um, nice. on a uh, project uh, song called Good Morning. Will be the uh, Probably the first uh, single, and and then I'm also working for on a backup single uh, titled "God Bless the Children." Nice, so, yeah, very cool. I'm doing that, and in the midst of that too, um, I have a whole new project, uh, pretty much written. And uh, once I complete this project, then I'm going to move forward into into that and it's just a you know what it's it's a uh it's always a continuation of what's next and i realize the beauty in recording because you know i want to i want to have something i want to have something tangible that people and audible that that a person can listen to whether i'm not there whether I'm there or not, or whether you know I'm I'm around or not, you know, there's there's something there. I, re- I remember uh, walking into a service uh, a few years ago, and I just dropped into the service, and and <laughs> during the an altar call section, I hear this song, and I'm and I'm like, wow, that song is familiar. And I'm trying to listen and figure out where. I, heard it and I realized it's me and it's my song <laughs> and it was being played in there for the for the altar call and uh, and then it just it just really hit me you know I, I don't you know I can still be utilized you know whatever what I do can still be used and being used whether I'm there or not and so so I'm I'm always excited about new recording projects and and just doing new things Wonderful. And, of course, the other big question is, now let's say people are listening in today and they're like, I'm totally digging at it. Is there a chance for them to meet you in person? Are you doing speaking engagements, public appearances, somewhere where somebody can show up and actually see you? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be doing a, a live, uh, probably about three, maybe three, four songs uh, live at um, – his Way Ministries in Rialto on okay. the 24th of this month. Right. Uh, so I will be doing something there. And then I have, um, I have something else going on. I can't, I don't know all the, I don't have all the exact. No, that's okay. I, I'm yeah. guessing it'll be on your website. That would be my guess because that's usually yeah. where everybody puts that up. I just thought, well, since we're online, in fact, we'll go through that in just a second, actually. Um, so uh, I can't believe it. We're over an hour already. Isn't this wild? It just it feels like the time goes so quickly. Every time I look, I'm like, seriously? Did we really talk for an hour? It's wild, you know? It, it, the time just goes too fast, sadly. And I always say that. I'm like, I want to keep all my guests forever, but I can't, sadly, unfortunately. Um I want to do a couple of quick things here. First of all, I'm going to read off the various ways to find you. So when I get done, if you don't mind, just let me know if I've missed anything, if you would. Um, to those that are listening in today, the gentleman's name, of course, is Ivan Edmonds. Um, the website itself is IvanEdmonds.com. Just so you know, his last name is spelled E-D-M-U-N-D-S. That's IvanEdmonds.com. He has a professional Facebook page, so you can look him up on Facebook. His Instagram is Ivan Edmonds Official. 
He is on iTunes, Reverb Nation, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Any other places I might have missed? No, you got it. That's good. Awesome. So that takes care of that. That's number one as far as that goes. Now, number two is, um, I don't know that you know this. Obviously, you're my first show back after a month or so, and I'm infamous for doing two different things. First of all, it's just to try to do as best of an interview as I can. But more importantly, we always like to surprise our guests with stuff, and I'm, I'm notorious for this. Because my feeling is you should get some sort of a game prize right, for coming out and putting up with me for an hour. So I'm like, seriously, I like to offer things to my guests. So, and you can muddle this around. You don't have to say yes or no. I just told Rachel, I said, you know what, I'm going to throw this out to him because certain people come on my show, and I want to believe that they're sent to me, and and I believe there's a reason you came on. Now, I know why you came on my show today. So, um, thank you. That's what I can say as far as that goes. There's a message you had for me. I got it. And I thank you very much for that message. Um, and in kind, of course, I always like to give back. So, give this some thought. Um you may not know this or not, but I mentioned in the beginning of the show that I'm about to start shooting my first film. I'm majorly excited and petrified and panicked all at the same time. Um, one of the things that I'm still searching is something that you're good at, which is music. And so I got to thinking yesterday, well, if I were to say to Ivan, for instance, I am in my movie and I'm only in two scenes of the movie. And in one particular scene, there is a song that is needed, and um, I'm actually getting married. <laughs> the scene finds me being a bride, actually. And so I thought to myself, if I asked Ivan to do one of two things, would he consider this? Which is, you could come up with something original to which I could play, you know, within the course of this wedding scene. Or one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard was a rendition of Ave Maria. And for some reason, I thought that I could see you singing this for me. It, meaning in the film, of course, and it would be part of my film. So I thought I would ask you if you would just put together something for me if you had the time or the interest. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yay! I, uh, you didn't say no. <laughs> I always I, get so afraid, I, like, they're going to say no, they're going to say no, and always, we're going to say yes. And you can think it over, obviously, because I'll be in contact after the interview, of course. But just think it over, um, you know, because we're not shooting, like, tomorrow. So it's not like this has to happen. But I'll, I'll give you a timeline, and we can talk at greater length about that. But I just wanted to throw that out there, of course. And I also want to forget to remind you, um, you've done these shows before, but just as a reminder of people listening in or your fans or followers, it takes about two hours or so for the show to archive. We did it live today. It'll become archived. I'll send you the link for it, and it also gets uploaded to my YouTube channel. So it'll be on there, and you can put it on your channel if you wish. So give it a couple hours or to the end of today. You'll get a copy of that. I also don't want to forget okay. to mention Rachel. Rachel, if it wasn't for Rachel of Big Hype Marketing, you and I would not be meeting here. She brings me some of the best. I have to tell you, this woman is, bra- well, you know, she's breathtakingly beautiful. I'm so jealous. She gets some of the best opportunities in the world ever. She works with some of the best clients. And I have to tell you, she's probably one of the best people to work with. Out of all my publicists, I absolutely know. I mean, she has great clients. I mean, and not only that, she has a charisma about her, and she's just very, very good at what she does. So, Rachel, as I've said publicly, and I'll say it again, I can't thank her enough. Um, another great interview. I hope I hope you weren't disappointed. I hope I made it up to you. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to get you on my program. Um, hopefully, I did what I needed to do. Hopefully, we had a good show. I hope. Um, I hope you'll walk away from this experience happy. Um, know that my door is open to you. I say this all the time. People come back on my show all the time. Please know that you can come back anytime you like, anytime you want um, to promote anything or even just to talk to me. Some people just like to talk to me because you can see I talk a lot. <laughs> so you want to come back? Come back on the show anytime. Um, I, I will. I, I thank you so much. You know, your, your show is just it was so great. You thank you. Just everything, everything about it was thank just wonderful. You. I have enjoyed myself thoroughly, oh. and, and it has really just really set my day off, and I'm really thankful Thank to you, you for giving Aww. me the opportunity <laughs> just to share as you have. I really, really have enjoyed it. That's wonderful. Well, certainly, and like I said, I'll be in touch after the show. Uh, obviously, we'll set some ideas up here in terms of what we want to look at for, as far as the movie goes, and like I said, don't be a stranger. I don't think that you can't come back at any time, certainly, um, you know, because that would be wonderful. And I got it all in before my kids started to be like, hey, Mom, it's a little too much. So I actually got this done before our day started, so now I can go be with my beautiful children. So I, I thank you for changing your schedule for me repeatedly. I really do appreciate it. Next time it'll be much smoother. Um, and I wish you nothing but success with the new CD, of course. I'll be talking about this after I get off the program, as a matter of fact. And, uh, yeah, enjoy your, the rest of your wonderful weekend. And I'll reach out soon, I promise. All right. Thank you so much. And you do the same. Anytime, dear. All right, have a great day, dear.
Bye-bye. Thank right. you, too. Wasn't he wonderful? Mr. Ivan Edmonds. One more time. Uh, he is on Facebook. He has a professional page. His website is IvanEdmonds.com. His Instagram, Ivan Edmonds Official. He is on iTunes, Reverb Nation, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And one more side note, if anybody wants to get a hold of Rachel with Big Hype Marketing, the website itself is BigHypeMarketing.com. Check her out. She handles just about everybody. She does her job well. She does it efficiently, and she does it with such class and grace. So thanks again, Rachel, for another wonderful interview and your patience. I'm going to go ahead and sign off because my beautiful children are waiting for me. Um, check on the Sims Chat Corner Facebook page or the website to find out who's on next week. We've had a bit of a mix-up in terms of shows, etc. So stay tuned. You guys have a great weekend, and take care.